This is a Sports Catastrophe production. Hey there, Heather Ho there. It's Jeff Cutter Diamond. Welcome you to another Sports Catastrophe on the state. And on this day, December 14th, 1988, CBS announces that they have the Major League Baseball package. For four years, from 1990 to 1993, they would have baseball be the exclusive American broadcaster over the air broadcaster of Major League Baseball for the tidy sum of one billion dollars. And yes, this is 1988 money, so it was a lot of money. Now, a lot of people were upset by CBS getting the one billion dollars for baseball because you know how NBC and ABC were handling baseball and all that. NBC and ABC had a shared agreement about one year one network would do the LCS and one network would do the, the other would do the World Series and back go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But CBS swooped in and took all of it, meaning that ABC would be without baseball. Okay, ABC without baseball, no big deal. But NBC, that was the big one. Because NBC had baseball since the beginning, since the 1930s and all that. By 1947, you know, when baseball went coast to coast, they were the main network. Now, that's not to say that CBS, this is their, this was their first foray into baseball and that they had basically swooped in at the last freaking second and, you know, overpaid and all that. Kind of like Fox for the NFC broadcast in 94. CBS actually had baseball f for a few things. They actually broadcast Games 3 and 4 of the 1947 World Series with Bob Edge on the call. Although the World Series was only seen in New York, Philadelphia, Schenectady, New York, and Washington. CBS would broadcast the All-Star Game from Ebbets Field in 1949 with Red Barber for fun play-by-play. -play -play. all that. CBS's flagship TV station WCBS broadcast the first game in color in 1951 between the Dodgers and Braves from Ebbets Field. It was through a field sequential color system. So anyway, and CBS actually did broadcast game one of that famous tiebreaker between the Dodgers and Giants. Red Barber called that game. The remaining two games was broadcast on NBC. So yeah, CBS did game one. And in 1955, the game of the week went to CBS. And all of that. So anyway, Dizzy Dean would be part of the broadcast and all that. Anyway, and all of that. One time, Dizzy Dean on the broadcast in 1958 ruffled the feathers of CBS, saying that I don't know how we come off calling this the game of the week, but there's a much better game on NBC. Anyway, Dizzy Dean did all that. So yes, so CBS would do Saturday, a Saturday game of the week and a Sunday game of the week. All that. So there were a lot of CBS stuff and all that. Anyway, yeah, by 1965, NBC would have a TV package that would knock CBS out and all that. NBC would sign the big contract 
by 1966, meaning that CBS was out of luck and no baseball at all. However, CBS radio was the main, CBS was lucky because the radio version actually replaced NBC radio as the exclusive national radio broadcaster. So CBS radio would do some stuff and all that. So anyway, CBS would, had a massive slump and said sports would be a powerful tool to get CBS back on the map. And this isn't just like for sports, this is for everything in general. So they basically paid a massive sum for Major League Baseball. So CBS paid approximately $1.8 billion or $2.46 billion in today's dollars for exclusive rights for four years or for over the air. So that practically meant that ABC, who had done Monday and Thursday night baseball, were done for, and NBC had been broadcasting baseball in some form since 1947, and the Game of the Week exclusively since 1966. So this was just shocking all that. You know, CBS would be paying each team $10 million, even in Toronto and Montreal. So, yeah. And baseball clubs, when they got the CBS and the ESPN cable deal, would spend those XX million on free agent players. Kind of smart, all that. huge. And a lot of people said NBC lost the baseball package to CBS because they were committed in broadcasting the 92 summer games from Barcelona. And of course that cuts into um, the baseball season for all of that. So yeah, so two weeks prior to the baseball deal with CBS, NBC said that they would pay over $400 million for the rights to the 92 Olympics. And there was the entire baseball package meant um, not, uh, prime time baseball, and NBC and ABC didn't want to cut into, didn't want to preempt things and all that. Yeah. Anyway, well, CBS had a weak prime time programming. They dared go for that kind of deal. And all that. However, CBS, uh, the question on everyone's lips. Was that, the question on everyone's lips was, when CBS did their stuff, that, was it worth it? That's the question. Well, CBS, had a plan for Brett Musburger to be the play-by-play -play announcer for CBS's bas baseball broadcast with Jack Buck being the secondary announcer. And then Tim McCarver would be moved to CBS to be with Musburger and Jim Cat of NBC would be moving to CBS to be Joe Buck's, Jack Buck's thing. Unfortunately, Musburger was canned by CBS. So that meant Jack Buck was the main guy alongside McCarver. And then Dick Stockton would be moving to the number two play by play work and all that. So anyway, I did all that. CBS had to, um, well, they did the All-Star Game, and it was actually a 68-minute rain delay. Caused a lot of things happening. So they started, so they did two get. so they focused on big market teams no matter what happened. The 
first game would be sent saturday april fourteenth the cubs in pittsburgh would face each other well while l a would face houston in the second c b s game the secondary game all that so anyway they did all that and yes canada did get a CBS game of the week as Oakland went to Toronto June 30th, 1990. Toronto got an extra one August 1990 and the final Saturday of the season Boston and Toronto would face each other. And at the 1990 postseason which saw the Reds sweep the A's 1991 they did their stuff and all that So, of course, 91 CBS doing that World Series, which saw six of the seven games become legends in a whole thing. So, yeah. Montreal got a game, for, a CBS game for the first time when they started playing in April 91. Jack Buck was dismissed for after a couple years later. And Sean McDonough, who was only 30 years old when he became the head play, play, play guy in 1992, did it. And yes, he was balding. Anyway, yeah. So Sean McDonough came through and all that. And of course, 92 was that season. Dick Stockton and Jim Cat did the ALCS for the Blue Jays when they took down Oakland. And then that's when Sean McDonough and Tim McCarver did the World Series in 92. And of course, 93 as well. So, 93 they did the thing. And then basically, they had financial problems. That's why CBS lost. The baseball package and the last game was game six. O Carter's home run. So CBS was gone. And NBC and ABC came back to do their joint things and all that. So anyway, there were a lot of things. Problems. Problems were the erratic scheduling, the Blue Jays factor and all that. All that. An unlike, unlikely timing for a lot of things. And too much money, they said. They basically said that there's too much money and all that. So that's just how baseball was on CBS. Sorry, I was a long diatribe, but I have to be honest with how CBS handled Major League Baseball in those four years. And that's how they did it. Anyhow, I'm Jeff Diamond to do.